Welcome everybody to Techcraft, this is Rob, and in today's video we'll be going back to basics with part two of my step-by-step -step beginner's guide to Siri shortcuts. Let's go. If you missed part one of this series, make sure that you check that out above. You will need to have watched that for this to make sense. In this video, we're going to dive into one of the most important concepts in shortcuts, and that is variables. As with part one, I assume no previous experience of any kind with computer programming. This is truly a beginner's series. Just a reminder about what's yet to come in the rest of this series. Part three is an important follow on to today's video where we'll talk about the concept of data types. Together, data types and variables are, in my opinion, the two core concepts that you really need to understand to build great shortcuts. In part four, we're gonna take a detailed look at conditional statements, loops, and other kind of scripting level actions alongside taking a look at how to get input from your users. In part five, we'll take a look at how to share your shortcuts with the wider community and also how to find and ingest shortcuts from the community. Then in part six, I'm just gonna discuss my own personal tips that I've developed over 20 years of experience as a computer programmer for making better shortcuts, easier shortcuts, and shortcuts that are easier to maintain. Let's dive straight in and take a look at variables. Let's start by answering the really important question, what is a variable? Simply put, a variable is a piece of data we have in our shortcut that we've given a name to. We can have a variable in our shortcut that holds some text, say a message to display in a notification, and we can call that the message. We can have another variable that holds an image, and we can call that variable the image. These are two separate variables, both holding different data, and they both have different names. The full set of types of data we can store in our variables is quite extensive inside shortcuts, and we're gonna dig into that more in part three. But for now, it's enough to know that we can create variables, store data inside them, and give those variables names. When we're being very precise, talking about variables, we'll call the data stored inside the variable, the variable value, and we'll call the name of the variable, the variable name. Sometimes you'll hear me just refer to the variable, meaning the actual data itself. That's very common in programming terms. So if you hear me say that, I'm being lax, but you should understand what I mean. Within shortcuts, there are three kinds of variables. There are explicit variables we create ourselves using the set variable action. There are magic variables that shortcuts creates for us as the output from actions, or indeed as the input to the shortcut. And then there are kind of like scripting variables that shortcuts creates as part of a loop or other kinds of scripting actions, which we'll see a lot more of in part four. To see a good example of magic variables and explicit variables in action, let's return to the shortcut that we made in part one and see how we can use variables in that shortcut. So here I am back in shortcuts with the shortcut we created in part one. And just as a reminder, this shortcut has two actions. The first one of these prompts the user for some input. And the second one of these shows that input as a notification. Notice that the show notification action has in this slot here for what we want it to show this variable called provided input. And this is actually the magic variable that is the output from this action. And to see that more clearly, what I'm gonna do is long press on this, press the select magic variable box, and now we can see the graph of what's happening in this shortcut. And we can see that the provided input variable, which is a magic variable, is tying these two actions together. When you have a lot of actions in shortcuts, relying on magic variables to tie them together can get very messy very, very quickly. So it's almost always better to use explicit variables. There are some cases where magic variables are fine and we'll discuss kind of the trade-offs between those two in the final part of this series. For now though, let's see how to use set variable in this shortcut to make things a little bit easier. So in the search box, I'm going to search for the set variable action. and I'm going to drag it in between here. And you can see that automatically what's happened is that the variable value has been set to the provided input magic variable, which is the output of this action here. This is a very handy thing that shortcuts will do is it tries to find the appropriate slot for the output of the previous action to go into. And we just need to give it a name. So I'm gonna call this the message. And then when I press return, the text for that goes blue, and that means that this name is now usable, this variable name is now usable elsewhere in our shortcut. To use this in the notification now, I want to re replace the use of the magic variable here with the use of the explicit variable. So I'm gonna long press on that, and notice now that in the input selection menu, down at the bottom here, we have the message variable. So I'm gonna press that to bring that up. If I run this shortcut now, we can see that this will all tie together still the same way. 
Okay, very nice. Just a reminder, at this point, shortcuts execute in order, top to bottom. So you have to have the set variable come after the thing you're setting it to and before any actions where you want to refer to it. So as an example of where having explicit variables can become useful, let's add some more data to our notification. Let's have an image attachment appear on the right side of the notification. So if I come back to the shortcut itself and if I expand this show more piece here, we can see that there is a place to put an attachment. And what I want this to be is an image. And the way I'm going to do this, is I'm going to use the find photos action, which comes complete with the photos app. I'm gonna drag this in right here. The reason why I've dragged this in here is I wanted to show a particular uh, knit that happens quite a bit that can lead to some annoying bugs in your shortcuts. Notice that the output of this action, which is the variable, the message, has been set to the value of this slot here. This is nonsense. This action is going to filter a list of photos. This variable is not a list of photos, it's just a piece of text. So what I want to do is just reset this and I'm gonna long press and then press clear. It now gets its default value of all photos. But I want to filter this further down. You don't need to worry about this too much right now. I just know that in this album here, I have some images that are, I use for these videos and I'm gonna limit it to just one. And then I want to bring in another set variable action, which I'm gonna drag down here. Make sure it's linked up. So it's definitely set to the output of that. And I'm gonna call that the image, press enter again. And now we can just take a quick browse. These two are stitched together by that. These two are stitched together by that. And this one is kind of sitting on its own. It has no line pointing to it because it's just using explicit variable names. If you're confused by the magic variables at any point, you can long press on this, choose select magic variable and the whole thing pops up. And the further down the chain you go, the more magic variables pop up because again, the shortcut executes in order top to bottom. So now all I need to do is come here, click choose variable and choose the image. So if we run this now, I'm gonna press the play button here, type in hello world. And there is our notification and it now has our image in it. And I want you to just know as well that it's actually output the image from this notification as well as the output of that action. So before we move on from the topic of variables, I just want to talk about a very special variable, a very special magic variable, which is the shortcut input variable. In part one, we talked a little bit about shortcuts that can be triggered from the iOS share sheet. And these shortcuts will receive some input from the application that triggers them. And that input is available in the shortcut input magic variable. Rather than explain this, let's just see it in action by building a really quick shortcut that will turn a Safari web page into a PDF. So we'll start with a blank shortcut and we'll come immediately into the three dots here and we'll call this one convert to PDF. I don't want this in the widget, so I'm gonna deselect that, but I do want it in the share sheet. So I'm gonna choose that option. Once you select that, this ability to choose the types of things that you want this shortcut to accept comes up. We'll talk a lot more about types next week. For now though, I just want this to work in Safari. So I'm gonna deselect all these things and choose Safari web pages. I'm gonna go back there, click done. So now I can see that my shortcut will accept as input Safari web pages. This means that the shortcut input variable is now available. And I want to have as my first action, the make PDF action. So I'll drag that in here. Notice it's automatically pulled in the shortcut input magic variable, but again, long press, select magic variable, and we can see that that's coming in from the top there if we get confused. And then the final thing I want to do here is bring in the quick look action, which is really handy for just popping up something that you've created and seeing what it is. This will show text, images, PDF, whatever. Notice that as I dragged it in, it automatically picked up the output variable from this action and made it the input for this slot here on the quick look action. And you can see the line showing that these are stitched together. So I can't really run this from shortcuts because it needs that input from Safari. So I'm gonna switch over to Safari and we'll trigger it from there. So here I am in Safari and this is the website of a viewer who I've been talking to a bit about his work for short, which is great. And I wanna turn this into a PDF. So I'm gonna click the share icon. I'm gonna scroll down until I see my shortcut, which is this one here, convert to PDF. I'm gonna click on that. The shortcut runs and there's my PDF. And I can now share that and save it as I want, but I now have a PDF of this website.
So in this video, we've learned all about how variables work. In shortcuts, we've seen both explicit and magic variables. We've also seen how to deal with the special variable that is the shortcut input. There is only one type of variable left, which is the kinds of variables that get created by scripting actions. And we'll see those when we look at scripting in part four. I hope you found this video useful and I hope it's been at least a bit entertaining. If so, please do hit like, do hit subscribe, and don't just hit subscribe, but hit the bell as well so you won't miss out on future parts of this series. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.